property. Okay, so this is the third time I've made some adjustments to my settings on my on my uh, Chromebook here, and it shuts off the video, so I won't do that anymore. Anyway, so we started with negative three and Mr. Alchema. The question was, if you were to add five, where would you end up? And he said two. Let's see if he's right. We're adding five. One, two, three, four, five. Nicely done. Put up 50 points. Okay. So um, let's see here. Move down a little bit. Okay, on your own it says for five, six, seven, and eight, it says graph the integer and its opposite. Well, instead of doing that, let me just ask you guys some questions. So let me pull a stick here. Mr. Marcourt, if you were to graph six on a number line where would you put the mark for six it's not a it's not a uh, trick question well this would be zero so so if we did one two three four five six if I said to graph six where would you graph it where would you put the point well, yeah, I think you could. See it is right before the end here, so that would be six. Now, Mr. Marcourt, if I said graph the opposite, where would you put that? At the other end, six over. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be negative six. So that would be graphing the opposite. Put up 20 points. So let me pull another stick here. Miss Harley. Uh, I'm looking at number six now. Number six says, graph the integer and its opposite. So first off, where would you put negative four? Um, one before the six, so like you go from zero and count. Six. Which way am I gonna go? Am I going to go left or am I going to go right? Left. Left, how many? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. So right here, this is negative four. And then I said to graph the opposite. Where would you put it? Well, if I just went four to the right, where am I going to end up? I'll end up at zero. So tell me where to graph the opposite of negative four. Okay, so the opposite place would be where 4 is, where 4 would go. That would be the opposite, okay? You got the right idea. Put up 20 points. All right, um, number 7. If I was to graph um, negative 12, I would graph it, put a negative 12 on the graph, It'd be 12 spaces from the, from, to the left of 0. And then the opposite would be 12 spaces to the right of 0. From 0. From zero. Could you what, hon? Yeah, yeah. When you draw your own graphs, and there's going to be times where you guys will do that, these increments could represent whatever you want. It could be 1, 2, 3, and as... Miss Ryan just pointed out, she, well, she asked, and then you could do 5, 10, 15, okay? They could also be um, by twos, or it could be by hundreds, 100, 200, 300. So when you draw your own graphs, it's up to you what each increment would be. All right, um, I think you guys understand that. Let's look at the next section here. And let's see what I want you guys to do. Um, let's see here. Uh, do number two. In fact, let's do that one together. It says, describe a real life example that you uh, can represent by a negative 1,200 or negative 1,200. Anybody have any thoughts of a real-life example? Ms. Ryan. Uh, when you're like, oh, 
I owe the bank. Um, can you, you can write the same one if you want. Uh, $1,200. Okay. What's another one? Put up 20 points. Oh. Yeah. I was sued for $1,200. I was sued. How do you spell sued? S-U-E-D. Is that right? Does that look right? Okay. Sued for um, $1,200. Hundred dollars. Okay. Twenty points. What's another one? Yeah. Um. Someone stole twelve hundred dollars from me. Twenty points. Nicely done. Okay. All right. So there's number two is done for you. There's all kinds of choices, or you can come up with your own. Um, let's see here. So it says graph um, the number that represents the situation on the number line. So I'm looking at this right, right here. And <clears throat> what I want you guys to do um, in a lot of these problems, it's, it's going to tell you to graph it. Get yourself a straight edge, okay, and just draw a little straight line. And then um, usually just uh, put a zero in the center of it. And then whatever the increments represent, it's, it's up to you, like I explained a couple minutes ago. All right? So um, here's what I don't want to see. OK, slop like that. Oh. Write neatly. Use a straight edge, the edge of a book or a sticky note. Um, you know, whatever you want, but just draw a nice straight line and your increments should be reasonably spaced apart. They should all be about the same distance apart. All right. Whoops. Okay, so I do want you to do um, four, five, six, and seven. Um, write a positive or negative integer, so 8, 10, 12, um, 14, um, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, Right there, 16 through 23. And then, in a minute, uh, identify the energy represented by the point on the number line. So, um, 26, 27, 28, 29. So you're going to identify whatever D would be or B would be. In other words, where it falls on the number line. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Do you just write the number below? Well, so here's the number line. Here's zero. Okay. And and I have a letter C right over here. And so this is negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2. What does letter C represent? Negative 1. one. That's easy. It is very easy. Literally gives you the answer. Right. I like this lesson. Yes. Yeah, All right. Um, let's see here. Number 30. Yeah, 32 would be a good one. And then 33, 34, and 35. Yeah, that's a few problems. But we skipped quite a few. Okay.